Shawshank Redemption! <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 times actors were pranked live on camera. I want to have one other thing for you also, and one other little surprise. For this list, we'll be looking at times when actors were subject to some iconic and unexpected practical jokes on camera. Did any of these pranks make you cackle? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Anne Hathaway. Ellen DeGeneres' guests always had a fairly good chance of being terrorized by the prank-happy host. Her favorite method seemed to be having performers hide in furniture on her set and burst out at an opportune moment. Let's make this one as painful as possible. All right, all right. <laughs> on this episode with guest Anne Hathaway, the two play a word game at an inconspicuous prop desk. Even when Hathaway noticed DeGeneres tapping the desk, which was a signal to the performer hiding inside, she still didn't quite see it coming. Whip. Ah! It just goes to show that not even the biggest A-list stars were safe from the host's antics. Number 19, Riverdale Casting Crew. Most TV sets are serious places where serious people do serious things. At least, that's what we assume. Apparently, that can't be said for the Riverdale set. In 2019, after KJ Appa posted an Instagram story of him going around the production tents with cups of hot coffee, the gag is that it's actually empty. Of course, his co-stars and crew don't know this until he motions as if he's about to spill it on them. It just makes his casting as high schooler Archie Andrews make so much more sense, as it's exactly the kind of thing a teenage boy would do. Some of the best pranks are also the simplest. Number 18, Melissa McCarthy. DeGeneres got another kick out of her favorite prank. This time, Melissa McCarthy was the target. While McCarthy, Tiffany Haddish, and Elizabeth Moss were on the Ellen DeGeneres show promoting The Kitchen, McCarthy's fandom of Billie Eilish came up. Melissa was uh, a huge Billie Eilish fan and uh, wanted to be in a, in a video, so uh, we kind of made that happen. Mm -hmm. Dream not, fulfilled, not, guys. Not that Billie knew she was... Not... <laughs> yeah, it wasn't sanctioned by Billie. No. As she talked about her love of the pop superstar, she had no idea that Eilish herself was hiding in a small table mere inches from her. DeGeneres was mid-sentence when Eilish popped out and scared McCarthy half to death. Ah! <laughs> oh my God! Needless to say, the entire studio erupted into screams and cheers. Everyone is so delighted, it's impossible not to get a serotonin boost from the whole thing. Number 17, Jonah Hill. The Wolf of Wall Street co-star seemed to have a fun relationship if this prank is any indication. Pretending to be a crazed, phone-wielding superfan, Leonardo DiCaprio accosted Jonah Hill on the street. Jonah was minding his own business on the sidewalk when Leo came running toward him like a crazed fan and appeared to scare the daylights out of the 32-year-old actor. The look of absolute terror on Hill's face is priceless. In the age of cell phones and social media, getting mobbed by fans in public just seems to be part of the experience of fame. Once Jonah realized the man was Leo pulling a prank, the two laughed and hug it out. Few people would know this more than DiCaprio and Hill. That's why it's so hilarious to see them reenacting this kind of freaky, invasive encounter with each other. It was just funny. I was totally taken off guard. I was scared. This is the best, man. Number 16, Sofia Vergata. The panel of judges on America's Got Talent see their fair share of comedy on the stage, but they're equally likely to play jokes on each other. With the help of two notorious contestants from a previous season, reality TV icon Simon Cowell played a massive prank on fellow judge Sofia Vergata. Because you don't know what's gonna happen at what moment. Somebody's gonna fall, somebody's gonna get burned, somebody's and, gonna get and shot, something somebody's gonna awful get can happen. Every, something horrific is going to happen, and that's what I love about this show. <laughs> Cal fixed it so that the blindfolded Vigara would be set up to think she accidentally shot him in the chest with a crossbow. It was hard to tell when the modern family actor began to suspect it was a prank, but the audience gasps were pretty convincing. Host Terry Crews's over the top reaction probably gave it away, but it's all in good fun. Sophia? I. Gotcha! <laughs> Number 15, Angela Bassett. This one was way more shocking than it was funny. Angela Bassett went viral for her emotional reaction to a prank played by her son Slater. The video shows Bassett and her husband, actor Courtney B. Vance, reacting with shocked disbelief at their son's announcement that Bassett's Black Panther co-star Michael B. Jordan had died. Wait, mom, dad. Did you did you hear this? Michael B. Jordan dead at 35? Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Except, it was a lie. The teenager who captured her live reaction on his phone was just participating in a viral TikTok trend. 
This prank proved to be pretty controversial, but as Bassett herself said, it's okay to make mistakes as long as we own up to them. We all make mistakes, own up to them, take responsibility, and then hold your head up and move forward. Number 14, Eric Stone Street. Eric Stone Street holds a very special place in the history of live actor pranks. Ellen DeGeneres created the famous scare table because she had run out of ways to scare him when he appeared on the show. We created this table for you. This became the Eric Stone Street scare table because we ran out of ways to scare you, so we created this table, and we're gonna now dedicate what? this table. Uh Fittingly, at the official dedication of the Eric Stone Street scare table, she pulled off yet another cunning and traumatic prank. The amazing thing about this one is that the hollow table is shown to be empty at the start of the segment. Somehow, a performer has tunneled into the table from offstage to give Stone Street yet another scare. Ah! You build a tunnel? After 18 appearances on the show, he still can't catch a break. Number 13, Taryn Edgerton. Celebrities probably get a lot of questionable gifts from fans. When Johanna James interviewed Eddie the Eagle co-stars Hugh Jackman and Taryn Edgerton, she surprised Jackman with a questionable bottle of homemade gin. I made it myself. You made it yourself? Yeah, I make gin on the side. You just mm. went straight into that. It could be anything. That is she could be so... a psychopath. Huh? She could, really, a, she could be a It's loser. really good. Jackman downed the entire bottle and almost immediately got sick. Edgerton was so confused by it all, he had no idea what to think. Of course, what Edgerton didn't know was that it was only water. If anything, the best thing about it is Jackson's totally subtle, truly convincing performance. I cannot believe that. I feel like such an idiot. You feel like, oh. <laughs> but you loved it. He really sells it without going over the top with it. It's the most charming, polite, and low-key prank ever. Number 12, Kevin Hart. Who doesn't love a good prank war? The ongoing lighthearted feud between Nick Cannon and Kevin Hart has had its fair share of great moments, but this one takes the cake. Real funny. Real funny, Nick. Real funny, Nick. When Hart rode up on the airplane hangar containing his waiting jet, he was shocked to see it was plastered with a big advertisement for Nick Cannon and his new talk show. The kicker was the phrase, Kevin rides the cannon, stenciled on the plane's side. Oh, Nick Cannon strikes again. Once Hart realized what was happening, the curse words really started flying. But it's all just fun and games between friends, we assume. Number 11, Justin Timberlake. Punked is probably the gold standard for live pranking celebrities. The first episode, guest starring musician and actor Justin Timberlake, is easily the most memorable of the show's original run. When the former InSync frontman rode up on his house, he was informed that all his possessions were being repossessed for back taxes. Uh, lien has been placed against a lot of your possessions. We have some back taxes. The tune of $900,000. Things really got real when the supposed government agents took his dogs out of the house. His tearful response to the prank went viral before going viral was even a thing. We'll be out of here in 20 minutes. Though we can laugh about it now, Timberlake later said he was under the influence of cannabis during the prank, and the experience actually made him stop using the substance for a while. Number 10, Elijah Wood. Apparently, actor Dominic Monaghan shares a thing or two in common with the rascally hobbit he plays. Today I will be interviewing Elijah Woods. Elijah is a incredible actor from Los Angeles, California. During the Berlin leg of the press tour for The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, Monaghan conducted an interview with co-star Elijah Wood via satellite. Only Wood didn't know it was his co-star. What time is it in Australia? Oh, I'm, I'm not in Australia. You're I'm in New in, Zealand? Um, no, I'm in New York. New York? New, New yeah. Amsterdam. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay, we begin now. Monaghan put on a German accent to portray Hans Jensen, an interviewer who doesn't seem to do much research and asks some fairly inappropriate questions. You have very big eyes, very big blue eyes. <laughs> Uh -huh. Do you think this is the reason why you are successful and famous? The interview, which was filmed as a DVD extra, is a hilarious look at the camaraderie the actors built on set. Oh, awesome. We filmed it on the DVD, so you're gonna be- No! Okay. Yeah! <laughs> yes! I love you, brother. Yes! I'll see you soon. Hey, I'll see you in New York. Oh, I love you. I thank you so much for doing that. That made my day. All right, brother. Big kisses. Bye. Number nine, Emily Blunt. Sometimes, it seemed like Ellen DeGeneres was more interested in scaring the hell out of her guests than talking with them. You have to learn a whole lot of things to become a citizen. I know more about the Constitution and government than most Americans. Yeah, I know. During Emily Blunt's 2015 appearance, Ellen decided to celebrate the fact that the British actress had become an American citizen with some patriotic songs. 
Wow, Ellen, that's so nice. Surely there's no ulterior motive here. This is your outfit? Yep, yep. All right, so. They gave me two choices. It was this one or one that didn't, like, have a flame no, in it. it I love the flame. Yeah. It's fantastic. OK, so the you stand amazing. right there, and then your first song is Yankee Doodle Dandy. OK. After making Blunt dress up as the Statue of Liberty and sing Yankee Doodle Dandy for her studio audience, Ellen watches with wicked glee as a man in an Uncle Sam costume comes out and scares the actress. Yankee Doodle, keep it up. Yankee Doodle. <laughs> Even in a state of panic and terror, though, Emily Blunt is eminently dignified. Number 8. Game of Thrones Extras It's gotta be hard enough to be an extra on a show as elaborately designed and dramatic as Game of Thrones. Really? Father's orders. Well, we mustn't disappoint Father. One wrong move or distracting facial expression, and you probably ruin the shot. While filming this very serious trial scene during the show's fourth season, Peter Dinklage and Nikolai Koster Waldau surprised the extras and crew by doing a jaunty little dance. Their fellow actors loved it. We guess when they're making a show this solemn, the actors have to let off some steam somehow. Actress Amelia Clark also got in on the fun, pranking actor Joe Nafo as he slept. <laughs> Number 7. Rose Leslie This one is yet another prank between Game of Thrones actors. This time, between Jon Snow actor Kit Harington and now wife Rose Leslie, who played Ygritte on the show. You know nothing, Jon Snow. I do know some things. On April Fool's Day, Harrington hit a cast of his own severed head in the fridge to scare his intended. Her priceless reaction is one of genuine terror. <laughs> Apparently, it scared her so badly, she warned Harrington that if he ever did something like that again, he could consider himself single. My family does April Fools. Her family doesn't do April Fools. <laughs> yeah, no date it was, and after that she was in tears, and well, I was yeah. there going, April Fools. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't go down well. Frankly, that'd be the least of our worries. We've seen what she can do with a bow and arrow. Number 6. Shamar Moore Even after a decade playing FBI agent Derek Morgan, Shamar Moore still couldn't suss out that he was the victim of an on-set prank. When Moore mistakenly shaved his goatee before filming for the current episode was over, it created continuity problems between scenes. So he shaved his goatee, thinking that we were starting another episode. That's a problem because clean-faced Shamar doesn't match all the other footage that we've shot of Shamar with the goatee. The crew decided to get him back by telling him he would have to wear green dots on his jaw and cheeks so they could digitally add the goatee back in. And one of the crew members goes, oh, I did a movie with Tom Hanks, and we had to do that for his beard. Now, this is where I become dumb dumb because I'm like, oh, Tom Hanks, Oscar winner. Well, if he had a beard and they had to do it, if Tom Hanks will do it, then I should do it. That was a lie. The crew upped the ante by adding big green lines on his face later in the day. It wasn't until his co-star broke down laughing that he realized he'd been had. His seriousness and professionalism is what makes it even funnier. That was a joke? <laughs> that there was a joke on him? Would you be I didn't know that! The man was a total good sport about it, and I know he's gonna get me back. Number 5. Annie Murphy When Schitt's Creek star Annie Murphy had her first talk show appearance, co-stars Dan and Eugene Levy pranked her backstage. Because we're all family at this point, we couldn't have it go smoothly, mm. so we had to play a prank mm -hmm. and annoy the heck out of her. <laughs> Enjoy. A writer for The Ellen DeGeneres Show went into her dressing room and pretended to be her personal assistant for the day, while the levees fed her awkward lines through an earpiece. They're just so handsome. Dan's my brother. We... They're both so handsome. They're both so... And Eugene is getting, like, more handsome as he gets older, which I think is really so uh, and like, dap, like he's just a dapper dude. The unsuspecting Murphy manages not to squirm too much while the writer repeats her co-star's increasingly unusual requests. But when the levies reveal themselves, it's basically a love fest. I've annoyed you a little bit. I feel like I may have annoyed you a little bit. And... You haven't, you haven't. Okay. Haven't. I'm sorry, it's okay. just... So how, when did you find out? Okay. okay. I want to know. <laughs> I want to know. And First of all... Like, this is... <laughs> What a great Bless job. Bless you for that. <laughs> There's something so satisfying in knowing that they're as charismatic in real life as they are on screen. Number 4. Benedict Cumberbatch 
Benedict Cumberbatch and fellow co-stars of Star Trek Into Darkness were the victims of a classic on-set prank by Simon Pegg and Chris Pine, with help from the crew. We told certain actors that you have to wear special cream inside the laser room because of neutron <laughs> damage. While shooting at a laboratory, the cast was told to apply something called neutron cream that was said to protect their neutrons from radiation damage. It went so far that Carl Urban and John Cho were tricked into filming a fake PSA. Here at NIF, the neutron ignition facility, we're trying to find the means to create nuclear fusion. Goodbye and have some fun now. And in the future, I'm John Cho. And I'm Carl Urban. And we've been... <laughs> Still, it was Benedict Cumberbatch's reaction that may have been the funniest. Cumberbatch signed a release form that gave away the joke, and didn't realize it until he actually read the form on camera. Hey, they're actors, not rocket scientists. Recognize that the topically applied emollient known as neutron cream does not exist. What? <laughs> Number 3. John Krasinski the ongoing holiday prank war between Jimmy Kimmel and John Krasinski, who used to be neighbors, left chaos and destruction in its wake. Like you said, we used to be neighbors. You're off. Yes, we did. We lived not just neighbors, but we literally lived right across the street from each other. Kimmel found a reindeer in his office bathroom and had his car gift wrapped, while Krasinski had his entire house gift wrapped. Yes, I gift wrapped your house completely. Yep. But nothing quite as dastardly as Kimmel's 2015 prank. The longtime late night host printed up handmade flyers for a yard sale at Krasinski's actual home. Posting the flyers all over Los Angeles, Kimmel invited the entire city to show up. And we posted them all over town today. Oh. So those are out there now. As a final flourish, he soaked his guest with eggnog. All is fair in love and prank wars. Number two, Jennifer Aniston. No one told her this take was going to be this way. Jennifer Aniston's co-stars decided to have a little fun on the set of We're the Millers. Woo! We did it! Uh, Nicely done, Millers. Give it up! Very good job. Here you go. Rose! Yeah! David! There you go. In this blooper, Aniston, Jason Sudeikis, Emma Roberts, and Will Poulter were supposed to listen to TLC's Waterfalls, but the track was switched out for the theme from Friends. How about a little victory music, shall yes, we? Yes, please. <laughs> Oh, I love this song! This song. <laughs> Aniston's surprise when the song begins to play is priceless and touching. It must be nice knowing that after all these years, there's still a loyal following for the show that made her a star, even if your co-stars use its theme song to prank you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Daniel Radcliffe It must be hard growing up on the sets of a popular fantasy series. All those awkward moments of adolescence are happening in front of cameras. There was this one, there was one time where in this room, actually, Michael Gambon and Alan Rickman, and I think Alfonso was kind of coordinating it, um, oh, took the opportunity no. to uh, Take... play a, um, a practical joke on me. Daniel Radcliffe found that out during the filming of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. While shooting a scene on the Hogwarts set, Radcliffe had asked that director Alfonso Cuaron place his sleeping bag near a girl he liked. And, and Dan has asked to have his sleeping bag next to this particular girl that he fancied? Well, Dumbledore actor Michael Gambon had a fart machine placed in Radcliffe's sleeping bag and activated it during the scene. Gambon even started stumbling over his lines, as if he didn't know it was coming. Our own world. You know, it's completely our own world. And we like to, we like to swim in the deepest waters. Now that's acting. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.